All right, guys, I just want to welcome back to the Everything College World Podcast. Today, me and Nick here will be doing a 2024 preview and prediction for the Tennessee Volunteers. This coaching staff, Josh Heupel, 27-12 and 12 record through three seasons. Joey Hazel, sixth straight year working with Heupel, will be the OC, and Tim Banks, his fourth year on the staff, likely in line for a potential head coaching gig somewhere down the line. 9-4 and four last season, lost all by double figures, three of them coming on the road, though. 13th ranked recruiting class, and they had three players taken in April's draft. A lot of things going well and rocky top, and that includes an offense, Nick, that we knew last year, you know, Joe Milton was getting unbelievable amounts of hype, and for good reason, because he is an extraordinary talent. But we put the brakes on that, Nick, from day one. We felt that this guy probably wouldn't show that much improvement, and at the end of the day, that's exactly what happened with this football team. He was not to the level that we assumed he could be. A guy that just continued to struggle with mechanics and accuracy, uh, and at times, you know, he would have guys wide open downfield. He would miss them. And then other times they'd be he would put it right on them and there'd be drops. I mean, there was just uh, you know a perfect storm of bad things that could happen to this offense. Did at times, Nick, and it led to a monumental fall off, 32 points per game. It's still a good number. Certainly nowhere near where they were in 22 though. And of course the rushing attack, they had a three-headed monster. It was just phenomenal. You know, Nico Lamaliva though is going to take over for Joe Milton, the guy I'm incredibly high on. I think he's going to be in the running for the Heisman Trophy. You know, a real athletic player for being six five. Uh, really up to 6'6 now, capable off-platform thrower, great live arm with the ability to make great throws on the run. It has a quick three-step drop. I like the velocity on throws to the boundary, you know, quick throws on curls and comebacks. Patented routes of this scheme, he just throws a great accuracy. The ball placement is phenomenal. I like his escape ability, nice scrambler, you know, the speed he allows him to be a major weapon in the red zone. I think it was, what, two or well, I think three touchdowns he had against Iowa in the bowl game. Definitely want to see how he does with pre-snap recognition and, you know, his abilities translate against tougher defenses. We're going to find that out this year, Nick. Nico is a phenomenal talent, though. I'm very excited for this player. You know, what are your thoughts on him? And, of course, Joe Milton just not showing the progression. Is that on him or is that on the staff? So quickly, I'm going to talk about Joe Milton and last year's offense. Before I talk about Nico, who is an incredible talent, Milton, and when we were looking at it from going from Hedden Hooker in 22 to Joe Milton in 2023, there was a lot of upside. A lot of Tennessee fans felt it would be a seamless transition, and a lot of fans in college football thought it would be, you know, Milton had that incredible arm. He could really air out that deep ball, and I thought he was a, a solid player that had some good experience, but I didn't think he was going to be ready enough to kind of make that step to reach that level that offense had in 2022. You and I both were on that early. We felt that Joe Milton was going to hold this offense back, and he ended up doing so. While the stats weren't incredibly bad on paper, right? 64% comp rate, 2,800 yards, 20 touchdowns to five interceptions for Joe Milton. It wasn't good enough. It wasn't what this offense needed, and it ended up costing Tennessee as they lost a few games few close games they struggle in other games as well and now you go to the nico show right he's going to step in here and be this new quarterback i'm super excited to see what he can do right in his limited snaps he had 62 percent comp rate 314 yards and two touchdowns across 45 attempts he's a really hot a really nice frame you know top top right recruit at a high school five star a really exciting prospect and a guy that looks like a seamless fit for this offense yes it's a lot tougher for a guy to step in and, and get to that early snaps early on in his career having played limited snaps last year we saw him in the bowl game we saw what he could do saw him get a little bit comfortable there and start to learn a bit and play with this offense obviously josh heupel's an offensive wizard so he's going to develop a quite the playbook and scheme for this kid to play in and be comfortable with tennessee landed the top recruit the fans were excited and i don't blame them this is a quarterback that could really take this team to the next level this offense was very good last year but nowhere near that phenomenal elite level it was two years ago i think with nico at with the keys of the offense they can get back to that elite level very quickly I remember picking them to lose at Florida week three last year. They did. The offense was incredibly stagnant. They were great in that first half on the road against Bama. Zero points in the second. Dominated against Missouri. Georgia, they had, you know, that rushing touchdown on the first play of the game. Absolutely nothing the rest of the game. So against tougher teams, you know, the, the, the offense really wasn't all that great. You know, they were good against Kentucky, Iowa as well. You, you know, even though obviously they punt every three plays. So that's certainly not as impressive, but. Dylan Sampson's going to take over. You know, they obviously lose two of their top rushers. But this is a player I really like. You know, his short area quickness is good. Does a good job changing direction. Doesn't lose momentum while doing so. Nice initial burst. Uh, you know, he's a capable pass catcher as well. Appears to have a strong lower half. Good peer. Gut runner. Expect a big season out of him. Certainly a bit of a fall off behind him. Khalifa Keith, you know, a power back at 6'1", 230. Cam Selden was a top 100 recruit last year. Doesn't have much vision, but has that short area burst for being 6'2", 222. True freshman Peyton Lewis should be in the rotation, a one-kit downhill runner 
Also has speed and angles to win outside. Typically a room that stays fresh and rotates very well, Nick. You know, what do you make of them this season? Uh, obviously a good, you know, patent of this offense is being able to run the fall with great efficiency. Um, and obviously a top 10 rushing attack last season, losing some guys in small and right. Big time losses. I think Samson's going to be great, though. And uh, it seems like they have ideal players to fit this rotation as well. I like this rotation. It's an opportunity for Dylan Sampson to step up and be this lead back. I do like Sampson a lot. You know, 604 yards and seven scores on the ground for him last year. 17 receptions and a touchdown as well. So he can be a threat out of the backfield. I think Sampson has real opportunity to grow up and be a star here. 5'11", 190. I think a good frame. Really solid, short quickness. Nice burst. Good footwork as well. Really solid player. I think Cameron Seldon's a really solid number two, number three back you guys you have in this back field, right? He has 106 yards on a few touches last year. So limited production for him, but a guy that has some experience that can be solid at times. Khalif Keith is a guy that's a really solid power back. Peyton Lewis could be involved as well. I think he's got really nice potential. Want to see what he looks like this year. This room is going to fall off a little bit, right? You lose right hood over a thousand yards. Obviously, that's going to be a huge loss. But I think Samson can get to a thousand yards this year. And there's no doubt in my mind he can be that productive a runner for this offense. Now you look at the wide receiver room that I think could potentially be one of the best in the country, Bro McCoy. Off to a good start last season before getting hurt. Didn't play after that. You know, a great outside wide receiver. Good high point with focus. Great on comebacks and curls. You know, only two drops in the past two years. Showcasing tough hands, 6'3", 220. A veteran at this point that's really revived his career here in Knoxville. Uh, you know, Chris Brazell, 6'5", 195 from Tulane. A lot of people wanted him. Tennessee got him. You know, possession pass catcher. Uh, that was very good for the Green Wave. Obviously, Mike Matthew is a top 50 recruit that has great hands and speed. Does a good job boxing out defenders and winning deep. He's expected to get on the field in some capacity. Dante Thornton expected to really thrive this year at 6'5", 214 with his great speed. For some reason, they had him in the slot last year. You know, obviously the speed was phenomenal, but looked much more natural once moved out wide. Uh, and then he got hurt, so that certainly wasn't great for him. It should certainly have an impact this season. Another guy with great speed and score a white slot option that wasn't as effective in the middle of the field as he probably should have been, mainly due to some limitations, I think, at quarterback. Uh, but performed well as a good deep threat. The quickness on screens, his yak ability really stand out. You know, Braylon Staley, a top 80 recruit, should step into a backup slot role. Uh, you know, Chaz Nimrod and Caleb Webb both gained some experience last year. So, the, you know, it's a pretty deep pass-catching group. Good variety of talent here. And, of course, they picked up tight end Holden Stays. Had a big game of 115 yards and two scores versus NC State in September for Notre Dame. Uh, only two scores and 61 yards the rest of the season. Uh, they also have Ethan Davis, a top 150 recruit from last year. He's probably going to be the starter at tight end. This is a very good receiving core, Nick. Obviously, a lot of variety here. Uh, you know, I think if they can stay healthy and they can use these guys properly, you're looking at a big uptick in production. It's a very deep room. I think it's a room that's got a lot of rotational ability. A lot of different guys can play different roles. Squirrel White's your nice leader there at 803 yards receiving last year. 12 yards per grab and two scores for him. I want to see that touchdown number get a little bit higher. I think he has a lot of opportunity to do that at the X. You know, it looks a little more natural out there. Brew McCoy in only five games last year at 217 yards, 12.8 yards per grab and one score. Obviously, that 17 yard uh, grabs through five games is a really solid start to the season. He fought the injuries last year, didn't really play the rest of the season. So I want to see what he looks like when he's fully healthy. Chaz Nimrod, I think he's an underrated player, 194 yards for him last year and one score. Caleb Webb, Dante Thornton each had a touchdown. They had you know a couple hundred yards receiving each Thornton. 225 and 17.2 yards or grabs so very effective during his nine games last year in terms of you know yards per catch on his attempts solid players overall and this is a really good very very strong wide receiver room that has a lot of rotational depth plus you add in a really solid player in brazil from from Tulane, you really get a good ad there, a guy that could really be a lightning rod in that middle of that offense at the wide receiver z i think this is a very solid wide receiver room a really top tier one in the sec now you look at the offensive line. One that I think is pretty underrated. They pick up a nice left tackle uh, in Lance Hurd. And I'm hearing was, you know, a bit of a peer NIL deal. You know, five-star in last year's cycle. Was good in his few appearances for LSU. Noted for having good play strength and finishing ability in the run game at 6'6", 340. Nice body control and foot speed. Overall, a raw player that may struggle in conference play early on. But this is the left tackle of the future for the Volunteers. Andre Karzik likely to take over left guard. It was a big, massive, you know, big disappointment after arriving from Texas last year. Jackson Lampley, a senior uh, there as well. But left guard's a big position of concern for them. An important piece for the Vols returns at center, though, in Cade Mays, a veteran that is coming off his best season, at least in pass protection. Javante Spragans at right guard was this team's best lineman, an incredibly crucial run blocker. Improved significantly in pass protection as well. I think he can certainly contend for All-American honors. 
John Campbell, you know, at 6'5", 320, was a solid left tackle for them after transferring in from Miami and her six, his sixth season of ball, nearly two K snaps under his belt, almost all being on the left side, though. They're going to move him to the right. Sophomore Vison Lang at center, one of the many young depth pieces that they have. This is a pretty deep offensive line. I think it's one that ultimately will improve this season. Interesting to see how Campbell manages moving over to right tackle, Nick. I don't think he'll struggle with that one bit, but I think this is a nice right side with him and Sprague and some big-time veterans there. Uh, overall, you have a lot of seniors that are going to be starting and then her, a five, former five-star at left tackle. I'm a big fan of this offensive line that probably won't get enough love this year. You have some questions about Campbell playing at right tackle at the previous being left tackle. You know, what's that going to look like? Is he going to be as, you know capable there? I'm a little concerned about that, but I think he's a player that has experience enough to figure it out. Lance Hurt, obviously a good add from LSU, like he alluded to. You know, NIL definitely played a role in this, but he's a really talented player. Leaves LSU for a rival in the SEC here at left tackle. Really solid player, top to bottom, can be that big impact offensive line piece you want. Jackson Lampley, Cooper Mays, Javante Spargans are all really solid players in the middle of this offensive line. They're all players that have some solid experience playing in the SEC. I think they really do have some potential to be solid unit. You know, I look at Hurd, though. He's a really boomer or bust kind of player. High impact if he is playing to his full potential. Love the size, love the footwork and the hands of him. This offensive line is a very underrated unit. It's very deep as well. Nice rotational pieces. Some guys that got snaps last year as, you know, freshman and sophomore. I do think this offensive line is a really solid unit. The verdict on the offensive side of the ball, you know, the Vols weren't as good as it should have been as Milton really didn't hit the potential. The non-everything college football media felt it would, you know, 35 to 37 points per game and having better balance is going to be the expectation from me here. I think Nico will easily be in the top 10 of Heisman voting with a deep wide receiver room. The aforementioned offensive line should improve in a run game now headlined by a back I really like in Sampson. No worries here one bit. Maybe other than some growing pains by Nico against the tougher defenses going on the road. Uh, you know, they have some tough road environments they have to deal with, Nick, and I think that will certainly hold them back at times. But I'm actually really hype on this offense. I think Tennessee's going to do great this year. Look at the defensive side of the ball. You know, this is one part uh, of teams with offenses like that that you certainly look to. And they're incredibly productive on one side. They kind of are lackluster on the other. And Tennessee has not been that case the last couple of years, Nick. This defense has been very good for them. Uh, you know, they lost 10 guys in the portal, only added four alongside the four returning starters. Losing the top six tacklers isn't great. They lose two guys who had 10-plus tackles for loss last year. Um, you know, so those are certainly things that are not great for them. But one thing that's phenomenal, you know, is this defensive line. We're going to get to James Pierce here in a second. But let's talk about the other guys who are equally as important. Amari Thomas, he's been a really good player for them as the top defensive tackle, especially as a run defender at 6'2", 340. Uh, Elijah Simmons was really impressive as well against the run. Omar, Omar Norman Lott was quite impactful in both facets, being third on the team in sacks at 301 pounds. Bryson Eason, another veteran this helpful in rotation, just wasn't as impactful. The Vols looking for a nice hybrid to complement James Pierce. You're looking at Dominic Bailey and Tyree West. You know, West being a solid pass rusher, both playing solid amount of reps last year. Well, Joshua Josephs, he's a twitchier athlete who enters his third season, probably going to be in a backup role. Um, what do you think of this defensive line, Nick? And then, of course, we'll get to James Pierce, who's projected to be the number one pick next year. Amari Thomas, I like him a lot. 35 total tackles. You're tied for your leading returning tackle getter at 35 with you know with a player from the secondary. We're talking about a second four and a half tackles for loss for Thomas as well last year, plus a sack. Solid numbers there, Omar. Uh, Norman Lott. I like him. I think he's a very underrated player. You know, one of those guys who's going to be a really solid motor player, going to rotate him in at defensive tackle, a guy that's going to get reps and get sacks for you and tackles, 26 total tackles, six tackles for loss, five and a half sacks last year, solid numbers, Joshua Josephs, 20 total tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, plus three sacks for him. I, I, I look at, you know, I look at Tyree West, like you said, nice rotational piece, 17 total tackles, three tackles for loss and two sacks. So these are a really solid unit top to bottom. And we haven't really talked about that, that absolute star player in Pierce. That I know everyone's really listen, looking for us to talk about. I'll let you kind of start off with what the potential first overall pick is going to look like this year for the volunteers. Yeah, you know, Pierce, you know, 6'5", 242, you know, on tape, he shows such subtle movements, great quickness, effortlessly redirects to win inside. Never stops moving his feet, and he comes downhill with some great momentum when playing off the ball. He does struggle to disengage, wins more by just pushing linemen backwards or worth athleticism, but he did lose the power game against J.C. Latham when they played Alabama. Uh, he can get washed away in the run game as well. Doesn't always show pop in his hands, uh, but from a raw aspect, the positives there, those are things you can't coach, Nick. This is you know phenomenal talent that he has, and it led the 14.5 TFLs and 10 sacks a season ago. 
a lot of people are expecting him to not just be the number one pick, but also be, you know, a guy that wins numerous awards, takes home plenty of hardware. The Volunteers have a great one here, and I certainly was impressed with him, you know, watching the Virginia tape, for example, first game of the year last season. And, man, he was making a play on every single snap, it seemed, and that's going to be the theme in 2024, they're hoping. James Pierce Jr. looks to be the best defensive player in college football this year. He could he will certainly be the first defensive player taken off the board in the 2025 draft. He may not go first overall because the quarterback is a position that every NFL team desires and needs. Defensive end, you know, taking a, a defensive lineman is not a flashy move with the first overall pick. But if Pierce does get taken first overall, he will have earned it. I think he's going to win a ton of accolades this year. I think he's going to win SEC Defensive Player of the Year. I think he's going to be an absolute dominant force for this Tennessee defense. Like he alluded to, double-digit tackles for loss, double-digit sacks last year had a pick six 52 yard return pretty impressive the big man can move two forced fumbles plus a pass breakup 28 total tackles for him i love what he can do with that size at 6'5, 242 really solid footwork really good quickness very very strong effort i love the footwork and the footwork's most impressive thing with him he's really solid very nice downhill as well really really top player here going to be my defensive player of the year for the SEC. I think he's going to be an absolute dominant home record for this S for this Tennessee defense. If you're a volunteer fan, seeing him on your defensive line, you got to be happy. You don't have to face him every single week. Quarterbacks in the SEC are going to be looking out for him. He's a really talented player. What a star the volunteers have here. You look towards the middle of the defense, one that has seen a good bit about a turnover this offseason, losing the top two tacklers, Elijah Herring to the portal, who went to Memphis, and then Aaron Beasley, he graduates you know, this is certainly going to be an interesting unit because in the past they've had some, you know, even like last year, some very impressive players. Keenan Philly steps into a starting role. He was great in his only game in the opener last year. Got hurt, you know, his sixth year of college football. Expected to be a major contributor. Jeremiah Tellander was pretty solid whenever he was pressed into action. Uh, you know, Arian Carter at the Sam really expected to be the next big thing after a rough true freshman season where he played limited snaps. Uh, you know, William Inge comes from Washington should help boost that. You know, Caleb Perry will be his backup, a guy who was pretty good in coverage. Depth has grown into some better balance in the middle. I think they're pretty happy with the options here. Uh, you know, I certainly want to see how much production they can replicate, though, because they're losing a lot of it. You know, obviously in 2022, they had a great linebacking group, and obviously the remains of that are now gone. Again, Nick, there's some better depth established than they previously had, but how much of an impact do you think this unit will have? And one thing we didn't say about the defensive lines, they've been great against the run. It's a legit unit, right? And if they don't want to have any fall off these linebackers will have to be just as good I like tell lander i think he's a really solid player 35 total tackles two and a half tackles for loss for him in limited snaps and 13 games carter eight games last year 17 total tackles can he step up and be that player i'm very concerned about this linebacking core right replacing a lot of talented players your top two tacklers were uh, linebackers now they're gone you have to find step up got you know is philly going to be able to step up and be that guy is carter going to look good as a true sophomore at wide linebacker i am worried about this unit i think it's this unit has a lot of question marks it seems to be in good shape but you know what type of step forward will these guys take that's a unit certainly keep an eye on this year now you look at a unit that i'm also going to be keeping an eye on that could be the downfall for this football team is the secondary you know german mccoy was a pretty good starter at corner for oregon state as a true freshman think this is a player who can really emerge with some more time on the field Ricky Gibson, also a rising sophomore, was admirable in his time on the field. Should take over as the other starting corner. Jordan Matthews, a guy that has potential, nice recovery speed, allows him to cover the intermediate range pretty well. Jalen McMurray has been a good starter for them, you know, for Temple the last two seasons. Likely to play the slot as he spent some more time over their last year. Uh, CB is an overwhelmed with talent at the moment. They have a little bit of depth, a lot of young guys, though. Lots of turnover at safety, though, this offseason. They lost like three or four different guys to the portal. Uh, Jacob Thomas played all over the place in a versatile role for Middle Tennessee. Has shown the ability to be a playmaker on that side of the ball. You know, Andre Torrenti played very well over the last few weeks of this season. He's in a battle with John Slaughter, who didn't play much for a starting spot. And then Boo Carter, an incoming true freshman who was a fifth-ranked athlete, is likely to find some playing time early as well. And then another guy in Jordan Thomas, who's a pretty great tackler, spent a good amount of time in the slot. You know, a lot of youth in the secondary. No one player you can point to as a definitive leader, Nick. And this is a team that's really struggled over the last couple years on the back end. You know, 121st in opponent completion rating allowed last year. They did get much better at cutting down the big plays that they allowed. Um, but that might go right back up if these young guys can't step in and fill up some holes. The secondary is shaky. They don't return a whole lot of production. Simmons 
19 total tackles, three tackles for loss for him in nine games. Tarante, 18 total tackles, two and a half tackles for loss. And then Thomas is 18 tackles and two tackles for loss. They don't return a lot of production. They don't return a lot of pass breakups. They don't return a lot of picks. I am concerned about this unit. I think they have some nice tacklers. But what are they looking at in coverage here? I think they're all kind of all over the place. McCoy is a good add from Oregon State. I think he can really develop and be a star player. But what's that transition going to look like? Is John Slaughter going to be good this year? You know, Will Boo Carter get some experience? You don't really want to throw a young player like him out there is he gonna be ready the secondary is a very young unit and worries me they were 64th in nation against the pass last year gave up 220 yards per game i think that number will be potentially more or similar to that this year you know i certainly you know wonder what happened to have all these safeties leave because again there's about three guys that were all pretty impactful for them that opted to go elsewhere that certainly is concerning with all this youth though i think that could certainly be the downfall for them uh and certainly look to the verdict for the side of the ball you know Tennessee had a great defensive line led by arguably the nation's best defender and they'll look to ride his wave as much as possible with a new tandem at linebacker takes over an effort of remaining stout against the run the to excel at making plays and I think Tim Banks will be able to replicate that to a good deal uh with this secondary seems destined to take a step back with all that youth they'll need to step up early overall a good defense they will struggle at times but hold their own and even help win games versus tough opponents Nick I'm that confident in being able to see them step up that leads us to the prediction, you know, the Vols offense should be much better than it was a season ago with an improved O-line, elite talent at quarterback, um, but they aren't perfect by any means as the run game has some question marks with the lack of proven depth as they're still capable of being overpowered up front. Uh, you know, the defense will be a good group, but they have some questions in the secondary and I think they'll be prone to allowing bigger plays to a tune that wasn't similar to 2022 where they were allowing them left and right like crazy. I think Nico will be great at times, but his lack of experience will be costly, and at times we'll make some mistakes. They'll certainly hurt this team. Pretty simple schedule. It's not all that difficult. Uh, you know, NC State in a neutral site game, it's probably going to be the biggest trap game for me. On the road against Oklahoma on that talented passing attack, I think that's certainly going to cost them in Norman. Uh, hosting, you know, Florida, Bama, and Kentucky three games in a row is a phenomenal draw, Nick. I see them losing the one at home to Alabama and then November 16th at Georgia. I think that's just going to be an opponent that continues to plague them. A minus offense for me. And I think, uh, you know, a B is an accurate mark for the defense, which I really want to boost higher because I think it's a great unit, but I'm really just expecting the secondary to let them down this season. I agree. If I think the secondary of this defense is going to be what causes the problems. I have made four here. I think they're going to lose that draw to Kentucky in that game. I think the Wildcats are a very good team, although I wouldn't be surprised to win that game at home. Neyland is a good atmosphere. I have them losing Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma as well. Although that NC State game is one to watch in Charlotte. I do think the Tennessee fans will travel decently well out there. It's a bit of a hike from Knoxville, but I think they will have some nice fan support out there in Charlotte. And what is an interesting kind of one-off neutral site game on week two. The rest of the schedule is pretty easy. A bit of a cakewalk here at eight and four. I think the defense is looking to let this team down, right? That secondary and linebacker unit, I'm very worried about them. I have concerns. I think the you know, defensive line with Pierce is going to be ridiculous. They're going to dominate. I think the offense will be very good. They'll find their groove. I think Nico will have some issues. You know, Maybe he'll find himself in a little bit of trouble against NC State, but by the time they get into conference play, he'll be comfortable figuring it out. He'll be able to sling it down the field. I love the wide receiver room. Top to bottom, squirrel right is a really talented player. They can't wait to see what he looks like this year. You know, Probably a 1,000 yards receiving for him. The offensive line, I think, is a really sturdy and steady unit. Heupel's a great coach and a great leader. Tennessee fans won't love 8-4. and four. They probably you know, they want to see their team in the playoff at this point time i think the playoffs are a little step too far ahead when you still have to play georgia and alabama teams that have historically dominated tennessee at least in the last 20 years or so tough draw certainly having to travel to athens late in the season but i think eight and four is a respectable season for tennessee as they continue to try and figure out a way to get into the playoffs and be a legit contender in the sec now i think if they go on the road early you know in the year and beat oklahoma with nico putting on a show against the venables led defense i think you're really going to be looking at something here with this team because that means the defense is probably also going to be clicking. And they're going to be set up to do damage, Nick, with those home draws. Certainly think this is an underrated team that can certainly make the playoffs if their quarterback you know, matures beyond his years. I certainly think that's very well possible. A little bit of a reach at this moment, though. But it's going to be a fun team to watch this season. Definitely expect them to get back to you know clicking on offense. I think the future is incredibly bright for Josh Heupel, who's doing a phenomenal job in Knoxville.
I think if you get to October 19th against Alabama, third Saturday in October, unbeaten, certainly game day would be in town for that. A similar environment to the one two years ago where, where they finally knocked off the Crimson Tide after Nick Saban dominating Tennessee for years in what was one of the most memorable games in college football history. So certainly could be, have that similar buildup if you're unbeaten by October 19th. Could really set up a great matchup there if the Crimson Tide are unbeaten as well based off what their schedule looks like. They potentially will be unbeaten. They obviously have to play Georgia a little bit earlier in the season. I think Tennessee is a very fun team they have a very passionate fan base and an incredible head coach with a quarterback that really has the sky the limit potential could be a Heisman winner this year if he has a really great season it's gonna be it for today's episode as always nick i appreciate you joining me looking forward to watching the volunteers this year make sure you like comment subscribe see you next time